three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Welcome to a dumb football questions edition of the O-Line Committee, where uh, a fan, me, gets to ask dumb football questions to two former NFL offensive linemen, one who is studying six and under softball rules between episodes here today. That's right. Hey, I got to know the rules about the coach pitch. And I was reading like, apparently the rules say three outs, you're out. Or if, if I was like, man, they're really going to kick a bunch of six-year-olds off the field. <laughs> like I thought this was you bad all the way through. I'm like, I got to brush up on these rules. Hey, no participation trophies. Hey girls, we're for real. Okay, let's do this. Let's get out there. Let's hit some dingers. Let's throw some girls out. Let's have some fun. You should see them. They're just so excited. They come to practice. It is so fun because they get so excited. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants to hit the ball. You're like, well, not everybody can hit it once. And then all of a sudden, all the bats are flying around. And I was talking to my wife. She's like, oh yeah, there's a rule in softball. When the coach is talking, the bats are on the ground. And it's so hard to implement because the girls are just so nice and cute. You're like, okay, honey, you gotta, put your, you gotta put your bat down though, okay? It, it was great. And you know what's funny is? There's a guy... This is insane. And you might get mad at me for saying this. But there's this girl on my team. She's phenomenal. Her dad played at Notre Dame defensive tackle. Back when I played at Ohio State, we played in the Fiesta Bowl against each other. I had no idea. Shows up first day, Trevor Laws. He's like, hey, what's up? Trevor Laws, yeah. Yeah, he was like, hey, what's up, coach? What's going on? And I'm like, this guy looks really familiar. He's like, yeah, I played against you at the Fiesta Bowl. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it, and then I got really nervous because I was like, oh, man, I hope I didn't do anything dirty or cheap to you. It's it's a, like, oh, man, it was there's a games. dark time in my life, actually, so I'm sorry. I was going through some things. Don't judge me. <laughs> uh, it's going to be great. And you know what was even great was practice starts, and all of a sudden he could see that I needed a catcher. He just jumps right up. He's back there. He's catching for me. I'm like, man, if anybody could see this now, two guys probably trying to kill each other 20 years ago. Now we're playing catch at the park with our daughters and Getting crazy, running chance, dude. It's all about the kids. You know that. Look, you man, you're multifaceted. Jeremiah, do you coach as many sports as Alex? Alex coaches, as far as I can tell, football, youth football, youth hockey, youth softball. Now, youth baseball, what, youth baseball as well. Wow, eleven, baby. Boys are crushing. There. I'll get there when my kids are old enough. He's he's yeah. a little bit ahead of the time for me there. Yeah, Jeremiah. I'll tell you this. He's not as nice to those girls, or he's much nicer to those girls as he is when his son comes home after two walks. <laughs> Oh, dude. I was so mad he didn't swing that bat. You know how much I paid for that bat? You don't even swing the damn thing? You're only getting the first. What the hell are you doing? Disagree. Dude, we... Disagree. I'm t- on, on base percentage matters in No, uh, in it baseball, doesn't. Alex. Listen, you're 11. I'm teaching you right now to be aggressive. If you don't go after that ball, it ain't coming to you, buddy. I'm serious. These boys weren't swinging their bats to Coach Boone. You see, you see how the whole tune, the whole tone just changed from like, <laughs> yeah. they're so sweet. Oh, these cute oh, little six swing the bat. I'm going to end Dude. your life. That's Time right. out. Time <laughs> out. It's hard. You go to this six you practice, it is so hard not to be down. Like, you're so excited. You're with the girls. They're doing their chants, and they're, like, flipping the stuff all over the place. You're like, this is amazing. And you go to the boys, and they're like, Coach. Todd, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Everybody, run! It's hot. It's gonna get even hotter. Everybody, now! Ball pole, Shut now. up, Brian! God, what did you say that to Coach Boone for? <laughs> and popsicles gone, gone. I've made you soft. Orange slices in between innings, gone, dead, gone. No. Sorry, Dairy Queen after the game, never again. Gone. Oh no, Swing we went to, to bat. dude. We went last night. Johnny went four for four, and he pitched to start the game and it was great and so we went to culver's and they have this oh. lemonade like creamsicle thing oh my god amazing dude culver's sponsored is like i don't know like late 90s they sponsor can they one sponsor of my this favorite. show dude. i mean my gosh a butter burger can you imagine a concrete Stop. mixer Stop. Oh, a turtle sundae while I'd breaking be there down every film. day every little day cheese curd, little cheese curd <laughs> let's get it all right i have three dumb football questions for you guys two of them submitted from uh, the growing audience of the o-line committee click the subscribe button and the like button on this youtube video so we can spread the word about this here this one comes from ben marzullo what's the worst thing you guys have had happen or heard of happening at the bottom of a pile during a football game Ooh, that's a good one uh, i could start <laughs> you go first it was in college, buddy Ben Cotton played. Uh, he played ne- tight end in Nebraska. We're playing Texas A and M. Um, Texas A and M Saturday night football. We were number nine. They were number seven. Huge game. 
We punt the ball. Or no, it's third down. We fumble the ball. And there's a pile up, right? And Ben is at the bottom of the pile trying to get the ball. And then all of a sudden he starts kicking, like ridiculous kicks. And he ends up getting a flag for it because they're like, unnecessary roughness. Like, you're kicking, da da da. He comes off the sideline. I'm like, Ben, what the hell? Our, line, our, our head coach is just grilling him. He was like, he was pinching my balls, man. He was pinching oh. me, pinching my balls. And we're like, shut up, Ben. He wasn't pinching your balls. We go back to the tape. He's just gripping and pulling and then all of a sudden the next day ben comes in and all the inside of his legs were black and blue because no. this dude was just pinching the crap oh. out of him dude. Oh. and so like we're all, and like our head coach even apologized in the team meeting room was like ben i am so sorry like should we press assault charges like it was <laughs> aggressive oh, no. and like he got a 15 yard penalty he got benched like it was bad but then we went back watched the tape we're like oh that guy was that guy was yanking and pulling on those things wasn't he and, and ben loved the guy that big balls you know and he was just getting those things gripped and yanked and that was by far the worst thing i've ever seen at the bottom so of like the like the nerves yeah. in his legs were just firing out of yeah, panic yeah that he was just, right? like he was oh dude this kid think about it if somebody was pinching the dude you'd be your, going oh, yeah. nuts you'd be going oh ham. god and, well, okay was he pinching i can't believe him all of it yes all of it all of it he was yes gripping. he was dude, that happens <laughs> that happens gripping. down there gripping and a pulling and just doing the little baby pinches right on the inside of your legs the like ba ba baby pinches like you know, little, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. imagine if i just walked up between your legs mag and just beep beep right on the interior there, and you, you know, know he's using his thumb so he's getting in there trying to get it that's, that's, <laughs> they, got those that's tacky, just... they got those tacky gloves too oh, oh yeah. those baby pinches will get you Dude, baby they're pinches, ruthless man, man. And that was wears, me. no one wears a cup right you, you don't wear no you guys don't wear no, no, no you can't move no. in a cup no. we played in kansas city one year and i can't remember the defensive lineman's name his last name was smith um damian smith Dimitri smith something uh there was a pile and anthony claimed that he had done the deed grabbed his junk i mean like full-on grabbed it in a melee broke out i mean full-on fines were issued melee and it was the same thing coach was like dude what what was that Dude, he grabbed my junk, and everyone was like, "Oh, all right, we're good then. All right, <laughs> we're yeah, okay, we're all fully right. justified in what we did." I mean, let's go find his family. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised. There are wild things that, <laughs> like, when I was early on, there was things that happened like that. But I feel like they've kind of toned down now, and there's so much. There's too many cameras. There's too many. That's cameras. what it is. There's too you much content. You can't get away with it anymore because there's a million different cameras looking like. I mean, I remember one time at the bottom of a pile, I got fish hooked in my mouth. Like, yeah. I had the ball, and some guy had had his hand in my face mask, and was just yanking on me like this, and I'm trying to bite him. But, like, you know, it's just like those yeah, type of would. things happen. Yeah, that, that, I mean, they fingers, poke I, your I, eyes. I you're trying to get their fingers dislocated to get them off the ball. Like, it's, it's, it is absolute chaos at the bottom of a pile. I love it when, like, the, ref, like the ref will just, like, jump in the middle of a pile. Well, that's too. the thing. Like, that's why, that's why you pile. You pile yeah. so that whoever's down at the bottom can fight to the death for the ball. Dude, right? you're, you're just, just going trying to buy crazy a few for more it. seconds to see who can rip. Who's who got it? it? I got it. I got it. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> Everyone's it's, just fighting. Yeah, that's why you're taught, like, pile, pile on. A, protect your guy. Right? Yeah. Like, if you can get on top of your guy, protect him. B, if not, buy your guy some time to fight for Could, the ball. The best thing is that when your teammate gets the ball and then you're on top of him and you kind of just engulf him and then you're like, all right, buddy, we're good. Now you're going to take a couple rib shots to get that ball because <laughs> like the guys as they're going in there, they're going to be throwing some of these in there to pull the ball out. And they suck, but, I mean, gouging eyes, fish hooks, it all happens down there. And the, the one big benefit is if a guy goes for a fish hook, you bite him. Like oh, yeah. you, you got to go hard on that bike too. Yeah, I mean he's yeah he's entering the lion's cage at that Absolutely. point. Do you guys remember that referee? <laughs> the worst is like, you're like fighting around. Like, yeah. <laughs> like a, it literally, it's like you like it's like someone's hooked you like you're a fish. You're just like <sighs> you're trying to fight out of it. <laughs> and you have a mouthpiece in, so you're trying to like spit the <laughs> mouthpiece off. It's, it's Do you guys not... remember that referee from like 15 years ago? It's a clip that goes around social media where I think it was there was some shenanigans like this happening in a pileup, and the referee comes on and goes. Uh, you know, 15 yard penalty on uh, so and so. He was giving him the giving business. Him the business. Him the business. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, to be honest with you, most of the problems happen away from the ball. So if you like, if on TV you see the ball all the time, it's when the ball that gets thrown, that's when the punches get thrown at the offensive line. Was, hey, 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 hey. But if you're going to get something, because you know nobody can see it, no one's watching. No. Yeah. Okay, a dumb football question number two here comes again from the O line committee YouTube comment section. By the way, pile in your questions. We'll just, no pun intended, we'll just uh, save them throughout the summer here. And, no baby uh, we'll, pinches will be given out. No, None. May, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe the best question every week can get a little baby pinch from Jeremiah. It'll be great. Okay, a tremolo man or tre uh, tremolux man 
says, Gosh. question, if the defense is taking cheap shots at your quarterback, like like the New Orleans Bounty Gate game and Brett Favre from 2009, <laughs> what do the offensive line players say or do to the defense to stop it? First of all, don't let them touch your quarterback. Yeah, like that's they can't, they can't cheap shot them if they don't get there. Second, if it's a real cheap shot, you dirt stomp them. Yeah. It's just, I mean, that's just the way, that's just the unwritten law. Right? I mean, I think back to 2018, we're playing the Dolphins, and Robert Quinn smokes Josh Allen as he, as he slides, and everyone just tried to just kill him. Like, just on top, and people got ejected the whole bit. I mean, think back to Marquise Pouncey when Miles Garrett tried to yeah. Rudolph helmet, right? Like, he's, he was trying to hurt that man. And like, there's just something about, like, a protective instinct where you have to lay the law down that this will not happen with our quarterback. Yeah. And sometimes it's going to cause a penalty. Sometimes it's a fine ejection. But, like, you can never leave margin for error. You have to let everyone on the league understand this is a non-negotiable. This will not happen. Yeah, in 2012, we were playing the Packers. And Cap was running down the sidelines for, like, 60 yards. And Clay, he stepped out of bounds. And then Clay horse collared him from behind. And there's actually a meme of it. You can see our entire bench clears. Because everyone, like Jeremiah said, you have to let people know that that won't be tolerated here. Like, it's okay to like if you get a sack and you hit him, that's fine. And that's why like these things aren't really to take a cheap shot on the quarterback now is very rare. I mean, what Miles Garrett did is extremely rare. You don't really see stuff like that, especially because the slide rule. Everyone's so afraid to hit him now. But like when things like that happened, you had to be quick and decisive and just start throwing punches. And you knew it was going to be. You probably might get cussed out. The refs, I think, in that game. I don't even think they threw a penalty on us because they were kind of like, yeah, we we get the scenario like they just horse collared your quarterback. We're, they were just trying to break everything up. And even some of the defenders, I remember we were trying to fight them. They were like, dude, we got it, bro. We got it. He didn't mean to. He didn't mean to. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We have to set a precedent. You can't do this shit. That being said, you can always tell when a quarterback has lost their team. When, oh, there yeah. is, when there is certain things that happen, a big shot on a quarterback. Maybe it's not even cheap, but a massive, huge shot and you don't see something like that happen, right? Like where you can tell the O-line's basically like, we're done with you, right? And I'm not going to throw names out here, <laughs> Niners. But, you know, you oh, saw I was thinking of a, a different, a different you, team you, this you year that happened it, You too. saw it in, I want to say it was 2017, 2016 maybe. Vikings are playing the Niners. Massive hit by Harrison Smith on the sideline. It was questionable. Easy. It was questionable. Easy. And I thought for sure, Stan, I was like, oh, that's a fight. Nothing. Not a punch, Easy. not a not a throw. E just everyone Z. just walking back to the huddle, and I can't you heard remember. Me. I it was 2015. Was a, I think there was a. I think there was an lineman on that team, number 75, that played and started at right guard for them. But I don't know. Was am I remembering that right, Alex? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna let the moment I stay right here <laughs> awkwardly. For I don't think I don't know if I saw him take that. <laughs> Oh, that's a, oh, I will check the tape. Oh, really? uh, there is receipts. Oh, I will no. check the tape. I'm not so sure there was. <laughs> I was watching that play. I, I mean, I, I'll just say this. I'll say way. this. Jeremiah is not wrong. And you can tell right away because the minute a quarterback gets hit, you should see five guys running to pick him up. Like, we know we're in the wrong, and it's our job to get you up. And at the same time, on film, if you're not seen picking that player up, me as a player, I get super pissed. Like when we watch sacks on TV and you just see the quarterback get up by himself, it drives me irate. Yeah. I cannot believe that you just totally biff that block and now you're going to stand there and make this dude get up by himself like an idiot. Like you should be there hand, dude. And I think every sack I gave up, I always was, psh, won't happen again. My bad. Yeah. Fell, fell through the cracks, my dude. He said, bro, I know, got you. Like that was the one way that you show your guy like, hey man, I, I screwed that up. I'm there for yeah. you now. I don't want to put you, I'm not going to put you guys in a spot because you guys weren't in the room, but there were some rumblings and reports that there was some stuff in Denver that it felt a little bit like that last year and some, some stuff spilling over on the sidelines. And, you know, that's, uh, that's got to be a lonely place to be if you're a quarterback, although probably in some cases self inflicted. There's a reason why there's yeah. a riff, but boy, that's, that uh, that's a tough situation, though, especially because Russ is just a super positive guy. And when you're not winning games and guys are losing and they're getting frustrated, like you're trying to bring them up and they're just going to lash out like that's I don't look at that so much as like he's lost the room as much as I'm like, they're just frustrated. Right. Number one, Mike, that's Mike Purcell. He's a defensive lineman. They yell for no reason. We just kind of let it in one ear and out the other. And we're like, somebody say something. No, not important to us. OK, got it. Right. But 
when you're losing and everyone's like, why are they losing? They should be winning. And people are attacking your team and they're constantly asking you questions in the media about your quarterback. And, oh, he's so happy. Is he still so happy right now? Is he really happy? Is he trying to bring you up? Like, you're just annoyed. And then all of a sudden in the middle of a game, you're losing. He's like, hey, come on, we got this. Like, you're just going to lash out. You're going to be like, dude, shut up and do it. Okay, enough of the talking. Go out and show me we can do this. That's fine. It's when he, Jeremiah said, you see your quarterback get hit in any way, and you see everybody just turn around and walk away. Like, ah, all right, back to the huddle. Oh. That's when you're like, ah, oh, the, what? It's over. It's over. What? It's over. <laughs> it's... Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, third and final, at least for this episode, dumb football question. This is from uh, uh, Phil in Minneapolis here. And my question to you guys is... <laughs> first, time what, listener, first time caller, long time right. listener. <laughs> what percentage of playing in the NFL is fun versus other emotions? Like if you had a pie chart of emotions for of all your years in the NFL, what percentage of it was fun? I'll go. You ready? Yeah. 90 Eight percent of it was fun for me. Ninety-eight percent. One part super raging mad, one part super confused, and the rest was all fun. Like that's wow. what super it was. Super confused. What's going on? What are we doing? <laughs> I'll, I'll. I have a little bit different take on that. Being a backup, um, you know, just being a bubble guy year in and year out. Like I'd say about fifty percent of it was incredibly fun. Like when you had made the team. And I think the other 50% was incredibly stressful and incredibly difficult um, because I would never felt safe, you know, and the emotional side of it that creeps into your mind of your counting numbers in the room. Like when you're not the guy, like you're like, okay, there's only going to keep nine of us. Am I number nine? Am I number seven? Am I number 13? Right? Like there's a big piece of that that weighs on you. But once you kind of get through all that, like the game itself is super fun The practices and playing and all of that, but like the other side of it, the business side of it is ugly and it's brutal. You know, I watched a guy get cut in the shower one time. Like we're taking a shower and a guy poked his head and like, hey, bring your playbook up. Coach wants to see you. Like those things happen. There's a guy fully taped going out to practice, cut. You know, and as a guy that was always kind of felt like I was on that <coughs> bubble sometimes, like that weighed heavily on me. And I mean, it, it carried over into the off season, right? On the off season, when you aren't the starter, you're like, okay, going into the draft, are they replacing me? Like, I watch the draft. The only time the draft is fun when you're an NFL player is when you get drafted. Other than that, you're constantly looking at it like, please don't take an O-lineman in the top three rounds. Please don't take an O-lineman in the top three rounds. Because as soon as they take one, then you start counting, okay, that's one more number that's not there for um, the roster. You know, so for me, it was 50% was incredible. I wouldn't give it up for the world. But that other 50% weighed on me. And it was tough on family life. It was tough on me personally. Um, you know, I tried to never let it affect me, but it was, it was really hard. Yeah. Does it also feel like too, it, you know, if you're if you're not if you don't get a big signing bonus or whatever, and you're kind of you're kind of fighting year year by year, and you're trying to make enough money to support your family and to not, I suppose there's a certain point, and this happens in baseball by the way, probably even more, where you get into the minor leagues and you're just trying to get to the major leagues, but now you're like 28 years old or 29. You know, I got to think that there's a certain level of stress of, well, I'm in my mid 20s now, and I I need to make this work. This has to be my career now or at least a launching point to something else, just like the pressure of, well, if it doesn't work, what do I do when I'm 27 years old? That kind of ultimately is how I retired. Um, you know, so in 2019, I blew my ankle up during OTAs, and they were like, hey, you don't need to fix this one tendon. We'll try and rehab you. Rehab for two months. I was like, I can't play football on this. We got to get it fixed. Got it fixed again, and got it, and they put me on IR, and they gave me two options. They were like, you can stay on IR all year, and get rehabbed, but you're not going to play it all this year because you'll be on IR. Or you can have an injury settlement, which will pay you out for eight weeks, I think it was, of the season, but we're going to release you, but then you can sign back with anyone once you're healthy. And, you know, for me, I'm like, I'm in year six. I need to play in order to extend my career. Like, I could stay on IR, make the rest of this check, and be good, but the odds of me having a career and a contract the next year are very low. So I ended up taking the injury settlement, betting on myself, Six weeks later, I blow my ankle up again in rehab, and my career was over. So, yeah, there is that clock in your head that you understand, like, if I don't play this year, I may never play again. You have to make decisions. You have to take risks, you know, and that's part of the game and part of why you need to have a good team of advisors and people to help you navigate through that because it's not an easy thing to do. There's no black and white answer. It's a lot of gray area. Man, that's uh, – because I think as, like, from a fan perspective – you think about the glory part of it, right? Like, oh, man, the, the scoring a touchdown on a Sunday or getting paid 
six, seven figures to to play a game or to play a sport without necessarily weighing that there is a different side to it. There is, a, I mean, Alex, I mean, how, how many conversations that have you and I had about just like the state of your knees or the way your body feels? Dude, I remember <clears throat> asking the, the first time Alex and I ever met, I was hosting a radio show on ESPN Twin Cities. And it was Alex, Alex, you, uh, yeah, you sat, came up and sat. It was like the opening of U.S. Bank yes, Stadium, and you came up and sat day. on the purple couches. We sat right in the end zone. And we looked out. And I asked you, it was either that or when you came over to one of the dive bars uh, for an interview. Like, I can't remember which one it was, but I asked you, would you do it all over again? All the, because CTE was a discussion at the time and the movie had come out. I said, if someone told you, hey, you can do it all, NFL, you know, 10 years in the league, but you're going to lose five or 10 years off the end of your life. And I remember you said, without hesitation, I would absolutely do it. Yeah, that's I mean, how much I love football. That's how much I love competition. Not only the, that, the money, everything. I, I not, agree. I, before he goes, I agree with that statement wholeheartedly as well. And I don't even think it's about the money. I think it's just about how much fun it is. I mean, my whole life has always been football, and it's kind of weird because when I look back on this, it's it's weird how you when you look back, you're like, man, I've never really done anything serious. I've always just played football, right? And everyone's like, but you were in the NFL. And you're like, yeah, but it was just kind of the next step. Like one led to two, two led to three, and eventually it was just your life. And now all of a sudden, I think it was a great point that you brought up. It's these kids that hit 27 that feel like they're in their peak and are like, wait a minute, I just got cut and I'm not ending up on a team and I'm not going anywhere. Now what do I do with my life? As opposed to my situation was different. I was like 33 when I retired. I'm like, dude, I'm broken. I just can't do this anymore. And it was insanely fun. But it goes back to the whole like, how much fun is it? It's as much fun as you want it to be. Yeah, it's extremely stressful, right? Like you have constantly, constant people up your ass all day. And if you think your job sucks, there is no HR in my job. So let me tell you some of the conversations I walked into. Okay, I had things thrown at me. I had things dumped on me. I had names called at me. I was 15 years old and coaches said things to me that I was like, I don't even think that's right, coach. They were like, deal with it, bro. What do you think happens at the next level? Like, all of these things are encompassed. On top of that, you're dealing with pain management. So every day you wake up, you're in a ton of pain. You're constantly hurting. And it almost becomes to the point to where you're like, well, I guess I must be feeling better because it didn't hurt as bad as yesterday. But then they go back and they're like, no, the ACL is still not there, bud. You're like, oh, I guess I'm just getting used to this pain. They're like, no, that's the nerves dying off. Like you're slowly just starting to break yourself in half. So you're dealing with all that. So when you look back at that, you're like, yeah, that was a whole life lived of beating your body insanely, getting yelled at constantly, driving yourself through competition. But it was the most fun you could have ever had because you met some of the greatest people. I got to sit in rooms with Jeremiah. We met people. I got to sit in rooms with other people. I got to meet legendary coaches. I got to meet people that other people would have died to meet. And you're sitting there and you're like, I may have lost my leg my entire life, but I just got to meet Alan Page, and he knows me, my name, and he'll never forget it. And when I go up to meet him again, he'll, he'll call me Mr. Boone. And I'll be like, oh, Mr. Page, how are you? It's such a great honor to meet you again. Like, you get to see these people, and you're like, that's what's so fun. And not only that, but, like, they know who you are. And they're like, oh, yeah, I remember you. Like, when we met, remember when we met Shanahan Sr.? Yeah. And we were talking. He's like, yeah, I know who you guys are. I, I, a little bit, piece of me, like, started to die inside. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Like just being able to walk into these rooms and be able to talk to these people and know what they're talking about, have this language that everybody wants to know, nobody can understand. And we're over here like, what's wrong with you guys? This is like the easiest dialogue because it's meant for people like us. Super simple, keep it straightforward. And at the same time, it's a lot of communication. And I think that's the one thing that people don't understand is like, when you walk into the NFL, you're, they're going to pull everything out of you. You're going to learn to talk in big rooms. You're going to learn to talk in small rooms. You're going to learn to talk like a man. You're going to learn how to be a big boy. So when you do go out into the world, you're like, man, this is, this is kind of a joke. Like, you guys are really nice to each other. Imagine if you guys were really mean to each other, right? Like, this, you're complaining about this? Are you serious? Oh, you guys have no idea what we heard behind closed doors. But that's what's so fun. Is that you're like, I lived a life that not a lot of people get to live. And I got to say things to my boss that people don't get to say. My boss said things to me. And it, everybody just laughed about it. And now we look back and we still laugh. Jeremy, how many laughs did we have at our last camp? Yeah. I mean, talking you, to Nick, you just, you just tell stories. I mean, you talk me and Nick and Alex added up between the three of us. I think we had like 26 surgeries in total, you know, but what we what we all said is like we do it all over again. Yep. You know, that's it, Nick, not, Nick, Nick, Nick Hardwick, by the way. Yeah. 11 year, the 11 year center for 
Philip Rivers and the Chargers, right? And, you know, so it's not a pity party. And by, like, we're saying, yeah, it's hard, it's stressful. But when you're a select group that gets to do something, it's special. You know, I hate when people compare it to the military or anything like that. that. So it's not like that. It's not like a SEAL where you're putting your life or death or whatever it is. But you are part of an elite group that everyone wants to do. Everyone in, like, you get to sit in rooms and have conversations with people that you never in your wildest dreams. Did I think I'd be blocking for Adrian Peterson when I was 14 years old? No. But no. I got to. Did I think I'd be sitting in a huddle with Phillip Rivers in Kansas City as he's barking out and we're trying to go to the playoffs? No. You know, but all those things are things you get to look back on. And, yeah, Alex and I both are going to need new knees by the time we're 45. But screw it. Yeah. It was fun. It was it fantastic. Was it. Like, it was yeah. just – it was worth it. Yeah. And, by the way, we got to run because uh, you guys have uh, meetings to jump on here. But this is the type of just behind-the-scenes stuff that we love these dumb football questions episodes to uh, to encompass. So keep, keep them coming. If there's anything you've ever wondered about the NFL – that you want to hear straight from two guys who play in the league, um, hit us up. Just put your comments in the YouTube comment section of this video or other videos. And if you could click the subscribe button and the like button for the O-line committee, you can help us spread the word here, spread the gospel of the trenches. Yes. All right, dudes. Great stuff. We'll hit you guys Thank with you. some more dumb football questions sometime down the road here, probably next week. This is an Offensive Line Lifestyle podcast.